This is part three of layer two. All right, um, I'm going to get back to using this um, medium sized brush. I'm going to put the small brush down, even though it is very enjoyable to use. Okay, because I don't need that small of a brush. I do need to reshape this brush, though. It's quite dark here. Okay, my general opinion is it is better to use a bigger brush than a smaller brush. Okay, it forces you to really think about the shape and it also forces you to think about your brush handling. That is, you know, how you move the brush. to use the flat shape of this brush to go back and shape yeah there we go I am not particularly happy with that the way it looks I'm gonna go with it though I think I can um, fix it a little bit as I go okay so here's the thing in this object almost everything that's getting hit by light you're going to think is almost white when you're looking at it but that's just because everything around it is so daggum dark okay if you need to give yourself a reference right this is white okay see how light that is there is nothing on this object that is pure white right nothing up here is pure white <clears throat> okay, it might be really light, but it's not that light. Faux show. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to be really careful, making sure that I'm only painting what I'm seeing. There we go. So, did y'all see what I did with the brush there? I'm holding it straight up and down, and then rather than moving my arm, just rotating my fingers to get a gentle curve there. Okay, there's a little bit of a cast shadow on this left hand side, so I can't quite do the same thing. There we go. So just like you can use the shape of the brush to your advantage, you can also use pressure that you put on the brush to your advantage. So you don't have to press a whole lot on the brush to make a mark. You can be very gentle with it. Now I see there's like a divot right here and some dents. Um, you don't have to really pay a lot of attention to that right now. That would be for um, a third layer. That I would call that surface, um, surface pattern and uh, a detail at that. Okay. And so what I do notice though is that because this oil can is a little bit dented, you see here, this edge between the light and the dark, you know, this um, curved plane that gets more light and this flat plane on the side, this is a cylinder. I notice that it's not a super hard edge between those two because it's kind of dented, it's a little bit kind of a, I mean, not crazy bumpy, but it goes up and down kind of naturally. Uh, and so I am gonna go ahead and you know, follow a path that helps it stay structurally sound, but, you know, for a correct ellipse, but I'm gonna not make it a perfectly smooth belt edge. Sorry, I just bonked my palette um, in my tabaret. Okay, there's some slightly darker areas here. A slightly darker area here. Okay. 
<clears throat> okay, and here there are a couple little moments that are a little bit lighter. I am not using white right here. This is not white that I'm using. This is a light gray. It's not even close to white, actually, on the palette. And then there are a couple little moments where it's really dusty back here. Again, if you need to, you know, just like reference, right? This is white. That is not white. It's a gray, right? No pure white at all. If you pull out the white too early, um, it, you know, it, it is always too specific, too quick. But it's also, once we start applying white, nine times out of 10, you know, 9.9 .9 times out of 10, we just, we can't stop ourselves. I can't stop myself. I wanna like put little highlights everywhere and then I end up flattening the image, like totally flattening the image. Okay, so on this part of the cylinder, all of this is darker than what's above it, right? But because the light is coming slightly from the right, um, it's gonna be extra dark over here, okay? So relationships, relationships, relationships. So it's pretty dark. Slow myself down a little bit. Not looking for details. I'm not gonna get seduced by kind of the more um, the tiny little bits of visual information. You are driving the bus, right? You are in charge. I recently read a um, was it a book? Yeah, this this book um, by uh, it's actually by a Buddhist, uh, a Tibetan Buddhist monk. Her name is uh, Pima or Pema Chodron, Chodron. Um, and one of the things that she talks about with mindfulness is, um, you know, if you imagine that, you know, you go about your life and you're riding an elephant, like you're sitting on the back of an elephant. <laughs> and as you go about your life, uh, you are constantly having to think about, like you're controlling this elephant. So your awareness and your impulses, I mean, that's, you know, the, the elephant, like what you want to do, like what you just in the moment, you're like, oh, oh my gosh, I want to do this. Um, but you have to be the rider on the elephant. You have to really control that elephant because the elephant goes where it's not supposed to go and in any given moment, it could be disastrous. So in this book, you know, she's um, you know, talking about <laughs> when you feel the impulse to do something or respond a certain way, you have to ask yourself, now who is responding? Is it you as the driver, the rider, um, the master, or is it the elephant? So, um, yeah, so <laughs> I'm kind of thinking about that this now as I'm making this painting, constantly making sure I'm not just following my, my impulses, I'm not just doing something that's pleasurable right in this moment. I'm really just I'm being trying to be responsible. Um, and, um, thinking through what I need to do so that it is even more satisfying later on. So in this layer, even though I'm not making details, what I'm doing is I'm setting the stage to be able to really design some details later on. Um, and as a result, those details are gonna be stunning. Should be, in theory, stunning, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and put this little rim on the bottom. Again, I am not coming anywhere near using bright white. Um, notice how, uh-oh, just shape this brush a little bit. Um, notice how the rim on the bottom is much lighter over here, and over here it gets a little bit darker. It never gets darker than what's right above it, but the rim over here is definitely darker than the rim on the right-hand side, right? So that's using light logic. You know, by comparison, it all looks really light. <laughs> but comparing to what's above it. But we know that as this little rim travels around the form, it has to respond differently to light on one side than the other because the light is on one side. Okay, so that might even be a little bit too light right there. So I'm going to go to slightly darker. 
So you got to use, you got to do this in a smart way. Yeah, that's not light enough. Got to do it in a smart way. And, and this is applying um, drawing lessons and, and observation lessons from, from all of last year. These lessons, see this looks really light, doesn't it? And it might be too light. It's not, it's not the same color as this over here though. Look what's interesting. It's ever so slightly lighter, or sorry, ever so slightly darker. I still think it's kind of flat. I think I flattened it a little bit. I think it needs to get a little bit darker over there. Let me see if I can get that, make that happen. Compared to what's over there, we go. That's better, better, better. Much better. Okay, because that's to be lighter than what's right here, lighter than what's right here, but it needs to be discernibly darker than this over here. Now, if you wanted to, you could enhance the lightness of it right here as it goes behind. You know, that's where it should be getting the most light. We're still not using white, 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 I promise. Okay, there we go. Now the only other thing left is this uh, quote unquote black box underneath. Let's see, we've been going about 11 minutes on this demo. Um, I think I can get this black box done a little bit more efficiently um, since there's not a lot of surface undulation. So what I notice is that and because this um, oil can is hanging over the side of the box, it's casting a little shadow and that is really lucky for us because that dark shadow we can actually enhance. I'm using pure black right there. We can enhance that shadow and make it even darker and that's going to make everything around it appear even a little bit lighter. So you can imagine if we had to use bright white, pure, pure white, perfect white to do part of this rim, then when we were doing this shadow down here we might not have pushed it as dark as we did. Right? We might not have had to. It would have looked darker because it was next to something that was lighter. And that wouldn't give us quite as much value contrast. It would end up flattening the image. Also, we'd have nowhere to go in terms of building lighter and lighter and lighter and more and more details. So the second layer, it really is mostly about um, you know, refining the shape, as I said, but also really pushing the low end of the value scale. Your third layer, your third layer is going to be um, of paint, um, expanding your middle tones. That's where your details are going to come in and um, kind of enhancing some of the most brilliant uh, light areas um, for compositional interest, like building a focal point, um, but also uh, for detail. So this goes down this way. The side plane is a smidge darker. Okay, so I'm gonna get this more accurate here. And the whole time I've been painting, I've known that there was something wrong with this side plane. Here we go. So I fixed it just now. There's a time and a place, right? Is it perfect? Probably not. It's certainly better than it was. I'm going to clean my brush and I'm going to kind of uh, make that edge a little bit uh, more crisp. Here we go. Okay, there we go. By using this brush in a slow and steady way. Okay. get like a stray bristle, especially if, um, especially if, you know, you got a, a, a deal on a brush and it's not the best brush. If you see a stray bristle, you can just pull it off or um, cut it off. If it can't be reshaped, if it's just going to be kind of squirrely. is a funny phrase to use because <laughs> in some cases the brushes are literally made of squirrel hair. 
like sable, sable brushes. Okay, so if I'm looking here, I am, that color actually is, ah, oh, crap. <laughs> that color is not bad. It wasn't bad until I put, um, <laughs> I rubbed that pure white on it. Okay, so what do I do when that happens? Well, um, I just got a blob of uh, too light paint on a, an area of my painting that's dry. Okay, so what I did is I'm gonna, I dipped my brush in the turpentine and the paint thinner. And I'm just gonna wipe it, <laughs> put it on there. I'm gonna use a tiny little rag, a tiny, tiny one, and I'm just gonna gently pull that up. Not too bad. So actually, you know, the rest of this box, uh, to me, it looks good from that first layer of paint. You know, if you if you look at it in the second layer and say, well, I think it it gets what I need, you know, in that second layer, then you don't have to repaint that. You don't have to go over it. What I do see is that there's this little rounded edge at the bottom um, of the box and the tiniest, thinnest little cast shadow, and that's going to be really helpful. Uh, it's a tiny cast shadow that kind of meets up with the bottom of the larger cast shadow. a little bit darker at the base right here too. Just right kind of at the front. Let me make sure I get that point, that corner, so we get a good sense of space. Okay, so that does it for our second layer. Um, let me try to um, get a, a closer um, a closer view of that um, in just a moment. Actually, maybe I can do it now. Here we go. So y'all can see some of the, the information. You know, from a distance, you know, it's possible that you were thinking, let me get rid of some parallax here. Here we go. Um, you may have been thinking that I was drawing, painting more details than I actually was. Um, closer in, you can really see, I mean, you can still see some brush strokes. You know, nothing is very perfect. A lot of things are implied, um, but from a distance, you know, your eye kind of matrixes that information. So that's layer two. So at the end of layer two, you should have a, a relatively, or I mean, a very structurally sound image, um, a structurally sound illusion of an object and the spaces around it. Um, you should have a sense for, you know, where you might want to adjust some transitions between values. Um, where you need to enhance things, um, and maybe some details that you want to add. Uh, in our third layer, we'll work on developing um, some of those details, but not all of them. You know, your details must be designed into the composition. So just because you see um, a scuff mark or something on the ground plane, you know, or a speck of old paint on this can, that doesn't mean you have to paint it there. Your job will be to, to figure out which details are most important to developing a focal point to developing visual interest, um, or if you're interested in like narrative or concept or content, you know, which details will um, kind of trigger some sort of association with a story or um, something psychological, okay? I um, hope that was, this was helpful. I'll see y'all later.